Hi there everyone and welcome to part two of my review of this, the new DJI O3 Air unit. In part one of my review, I looked at how DJI O3 compares to HD0, Walksnail Avatar and DJI V1 in terms of image quality and latency. And in this second part of the video, we're going to be extending that comparison to look at how the O3 system compares to a cheaper action camera like this Runcam 5 or a more expensive action camera like this GoPro Hero 9 in terms of image quality. And this is an important comparison to make because if DJI is to be believed, the O3A in it is going to be able to replace the GoPro that you would typically run on your five inch freestyle quads. So let's see if the O3 system can live up to that expectation and take a look at these systems side by side. All right, so let's start with a side-by-side -side comparison of the DJI O3 system against a cheaper action camera. Now I'm using a Runcam 5 for this test, but I think this comparison is valid for something like the Insta360 Go or Go 2, the Cadex Peanut, the Foxier Box, all of these cheaper action cameras that can be had for somewhere around $100. As I like to do with these side-by-side -side comparisons, I'm not gonna tell you which camera is which off the bat. I'm going to let you form your own unbiased opinion on which of these images you prefer. To my mind, the image on the right has a much more vibrant color palette than the image on the left. And also the camera on the left seems to be having a little bit more trouble with lens flare in this sunny environment than the camera on the right. Now I'm going to zoom both the images in to two times and I'd encourage you to pause and unpause the video at this point to really pixel peep into the amount of detail that each of these cameras is able to capture in the image. To my mind, the camera on the right is definitely capturing a lot more detail. So now I'm going to put you out of your misery and show you which is which. We have the Runcam 5 on the left recording at 1440p and on the right we have the DJI O3 system recording in 4K, 60 frames per second. To give a fair comparison between these two cameras, I've actually turned off the image stabilization on the O3 system because the Runcam 5 doesn't have that feature. I didn't want it to skew the results. But I think regardless, we can see that the DJI O3 system is definitely outperforming this cheaper action camera. Okay, so now let's take a look at a side-by-side -side between the DJI O3 system and a GoPro Hero 9. The GoPro is recording in 4K 30 Super View with hyper smooth on, medium sharpness, ISO locked at 100 and high bit rate. These are settings that I've had recommended to me. And on the O3 system, we're recording in 4K 60 wide field of view with rock steady on. Again, I'm not gonna tell you which camera is which right away. I'm gonna let you form your own opinion. To my mind, the image on the left-hand side is definitely brighter in terms of exposure, and it's definitely got a more vibrant color palette than the image on the right-hand side. Now, let's take a look at the detail in the image by zooming both into two times. And again, I encourage you to pause and unpause the video as many times as you want to see how the cameras are capturing the detail. Which image has more detail? Are both cameras doing an equally good job of capturing all the detail in the foliage? I've pixel peeped on these videos quite a bit and to my mind I think the camera on the left has slightly more detail. Just occasionally the camera on the right has a little bit of smudging in the foliage particularly when uh, there's not too much light in that area. The camera on the left is really picking out a lot more detail in those specific areas but overall I think that both images have a really exceptional amount of detail. And now I'm going to put you out of your misery the image on the left is the GoPro Hero 9 and the image on the right is the DJI O3 system. Now I should say that in the interests of a completely fair comparison, I haven't put an ND filter on the GoPro for this flight. And normally in this kind of weather, I would use an ND filter just to help bring that exposure level down a little bit and also to really bring out a bit more motion blur in the image, which I really like when, when I'm flying through foliage. 
And it should be noted that that's not something that you can do with the DJI O3 system. You probably don't want to add ND filters and motion blur onto your FPV camera because it may make it a little bit more difficult to see the detail that you need to see to be able to fly. Okay, so now that you've seen the side by side and made up your own mind about how the O3 system compares to the GoPro and the Runcam, let me give you my thoughts on the O3 system and how it stacks up based on all of my testing that I've done so far. The O3 system offers excellent onboard recording. 4K, 60 frames per second, loads of detail, a nice color palette. It's really very, very good. Maybe not quite up to the level of a GoPro, but it's certainly getting very, very close. It's a very lightweight system. It's lighter even than a naked GoPro plus um, another HD FPV system. And it's gonna be excellent for smaller quads where maybe you don't wanna carry the weight of a GoPro or even a naked GoPro in addition to your FPV camera. So in that situation, you're getting excellent onboard recording really for a minimal weight penalty. Pricing is also pretty competitive. So we're looking at £210, $230 or 250 euros for the DJI O3 system. And that's significantly cheaper than a GoPro. And if you consider the premium over another HD FPV system to be about $100 or so, you can start to see that you would need to buy several systems before that $100 per system adds up to the $400 or $500 you're gonna spend on a GoPro. So pricing is, is pretty competitive as well. What are the disadvantages of the system compared to a dedicated action camera like a GoPro and another HD FPV system like DJI V1, Walksnail Avatar or HD Zero? I think the biggest one is going to be in terms of latency of the system. The O3 system is significantly slower than HD0, Walksnet Avatar or DJI V1, particularly when you're recording in those higher resolutions and lower frame rates, so 4K60, 4K50. That really does affect the latency of the FPV feed and for some pilots, that's gonna be a deal breaker. If they need to fly very, very close to objects, need to fly fast, then that extra latency is gonna hurt them quite a lot. That said, if you're not very sensitive to latency, if you're flying something like a Cinewoop maybe, or you're doing long range cruising where you're not in close proximity to objects, you're not flying super fast, then the O3 system is gonna be excellent for those types of applications because you do get that improved image quality in the FPV feed. You get that 1080p image, loads of detail, and it looks really, really good with the DJI goggles too, with their OLED screens. So that is another benefit of the system. Another disadvantage of the system is the lack of customization that you can do in terms of adding ND filters and adjusting camera settings. There's always a compromise that you have to strike between how the onboard recording is gonna look and how the image that you're gonna see in the goggles is gonna look, because those images are, are gonna be linked, they're the same, because they're coming from the same camera. And so that tends to mean that you need to prioritize the quality of the onboard recording and compromise some, somewhat the quality of the image that you see in your FPV goggles. And what I mean by that is that the exposure and the shadow detail is all keyed towards a really vibrant contrasty image for the onboard recording, which looks fantastic. But when you're trying to fly and you're looking for maximum detail in the shadows, maximum detail in dark areas, actually it can be easier to have an image that's slightly flatter with less difference between the highlights and the dark areas so that you can see more detail in the image all the time. And that's something that you can do with a dedicated FPV system, something that DJI V1 does really, really well but you can't do that if you also want a really vibrant contrast image in the onboard recording with O3. If you have a dedicated action camera like a GoPro, you can use an ND filter, you can change the settings, and you can do that independently so you can get the best quality image for the onboard recording, and then separately you can tune your HD FPV system 
to give you the image that you find most useful when you're flying. And so that, that's a benefit of the two. So in conclusion, I think the O3 system is a very impressive piece of technology. And I think that it is going to be very popular with a lot of pilots, particularly those who are flying Cinewhoops or flying long range, where they're not so concerned about latency, but they really want that super high quality image and the onboard recording with minimum extra weight. If you are someone who flies aggressive freestyle and who really prioritizes the latency of the link, I think you're still going to be better served by a dedicated action camera like a GoPro and a dedicated HD FPV system like Walksnow Avatar or HD Zero because that is going to give you the, the best of both worlds. You'll be able to optimize both of the cameras for the type of image that you want them each to capture without having to, to make any sort of compromise. And overall, I think this speaks to what DJI is really great at doing, which is taking professional capabilities and scaling them down and bringing them to the widest possible base of consumers. So now we have high quality onboard recording and image stabilization built in and accessible to everyone, even those people who don't want to shell out for uh, an expensive action camera like a GoPro. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found the information useful to help you make up your mind as to whether the new O3 system is right for you. If you'd like to support more work like this, then I do have a Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month and get access to a special area of my Discord server, as well as sneak peeks of the projects that I'm working on. If you're not able to commit to a subscription right now, then you can also throw a few dollars my way on Buy Me A Coffee. And there are links to both of those down in the video description. I sure would appreciate your support. If you've decided the O3 system is right for you, I have just updated my AOS line of frames with support for the new O3 camera and air unit. So there's a link in the video description to where you can check out those frames as well. And the improved vibration and resonance performance of AOS frames is particularly critical for the O3 system to get the most out of the image stabilization technology, the Rocksteady, that's built into the system. That's all that I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.